control chart. Let us see how to use control chart in process control. Control charts, how to use them. The processes in manufacturing require constant monitoring and control. The control has to be data based. All sensitive processes in manufacturing need live monitoring and control. For this, engineers need to learn how to use control charts. Control charts may be used at least in two ways. For live control on the shop floor. For analysis of the data, to understand the data as part of problem solving or improvements. Control charts help in monitoring the change in process over a period. What is a control chart and how does it look? Simple control chart with upper and lower control limits. X bar, R chart, for accurate and precise control. Simple process control chart. This chart may be used to monitor the process in a factory. The upper control limit and lower control limit may be already prescribed in the quality plans of the company. If they are not defined, then the UCL and LCL have to be worked out. There is a process for this. Simple process control chart may also be used to understand the status of a process as part of a problem solving exercise. When a team is solving a problem, the team may want to collect data and understand the status of the process. For example, the sand temperature may be collected at higher frequency to understand the process. This may be plotted as a control chart to understand how far is it within the control limits. The sheet set length may be plotted as a graph or control chart to understand the variation that is happening in the length in the cutting process. How to prepare the control chart? Let us prepare a control chart for the pouring temperature in a foundry. The actual data is taken for 30 molds. The mean is calculated for the actual temperature. Data using is equal to average function in Excel, highlighting all 30 actual temperature values. The mean is copied in every row alongside the actual temperature. The standard deviation is calculated for the actual temperature. Data using is equal to standard deviation function highlighting all 30 actual temperature values. The upper control limit is calculated with the formula mean plus 3 into standard deviation. And lower control limit is calculated with the formula mean minus 3 into standard deviation. Both values are copies in every row next to mean value. After this temperature, mean, upper control limit, lower control limit columns are selected along with data to insert a simple line graph. This graph will look like this. The sheet set length had been varying. There were 8 cases of length varying identified in the buyer audit. The buyer had asked for 100% inspection by external agency. The team do not want to continue the external inspection for long time, and hence they have taken up a project to solve this problem. The team collected 30 values of sheet set length, and now they want to understand how the control on the cutting activity. The mean value of the length is calculated using average covering all the actual length values. They copied this mean value in every row next to the actual length value. After this they calculated the standard deviation of the actual length, with standard deviation covering all actual length values. Then they calculated the upper control limit with the formula mean plus 3 into standard deviation. They copied this in every row, next to the mean value column. Similarly they calculated the lower control limit with the formula, mean minus 3 into standard deviation. 
They again copied this in every row next to the upper control limit column. After this they selected the length, mean, upper control limit, lower control limit columns and inserted a simple line graph. This control chart looks like this. How else the control chart can be used? The control chart can be used to monitor the actual values on the shop floor. It can also be used for a one-time understanding, as in the case of sheet sets. Now, let us see how we can draw X bar R chart. To control the process more precisely, X bar R chart can be used. X bar means the mean, and R is the range. In the case of pouring temperature, metal in each of the ladles may be used for pouring about 8 molds. The average can be taken for these 8 molds, and this average will replace the actual temperature in the earlier example. Rest of the process for plotting the control chart is the same. In this case, as we are plotting the graph for the mean, it is called as X bar chart. Similarly the range for the 8 values of each ladle is calculated. This range numbers will replace the actual temperature data, in the earlier example. Rest of the process is same. By using the X bar R chart, the process can be controlled in a closer manner. What is range an example? In case of a foundry, the metal from one ladle is used to pour 6 to 8 molds. The pouring temperature of each mold may vary slightly. It may be as follows. The range is the difference between highest value and the lowest value. In this case, it is 1395 minus 1380 is equal to 15. This way the range value may be taken from pouring several ladles. This way we will be understanding the temperature range, in which we are operating while pouring metal from several ladles as part of the process. We will be plotting the graph for the range values, calculated from every ladle. In case of a made-up factory, we may be checking the sheet set length every hour. We may collect the data for 5 samples every hour. The sheet set length may be as follows. The highest value in the above 5 values is 191. Lowest value is 190. The range is 191 minus 190 is equal to 1. This way the range value may be taken from hourly sheet set length data of 5 sheet sets. This way we will be understanding the range of length of sheet sets, in which we are operating. We will be plotting the graph for the range values, calculated from every hour. How to interpret the control chart? Control chart can be used to control the process. When the process goes out of UCL or LCL, we know that the process is out of control. But a control chart can be used for more than that. We can use it for monitoring the process closely. One normal practice is to have an operating range, that is stricter than the total specification. Normally it will be 70% of the specification. Instead of taking mean minus 3 into standard deviation, we can take mean minus 2 into standard deviation to calculate the operating range. We can also divide the total specification into three equal zones, below and above the mean. In these three zones, the following rules can be applied to interpret the graph more closely. Rules for interpreting the control chart You can use the rules for tighter control of the process. It gives you a chance to respond before, it is totally out of control. 
Rule 1. Beyond limits. One or more points beyond the control limits. Rule 2. Zone A. Two out of three consecutive points in Zone A, or beyond. Rule 3. Zone B. Four out of five consecutive points in Zone B, or beyond. Rule 4. Zone C. Seven or more consecutive points on one side of the average in Zone C or beyond. Rule 5. Trend. Seven consecutive points trending up or trending down. Rule 6. Mixture. Eight consecutive points with no points in Zone C. Rule 7. Stratification. 15 consecutive points in Zone C. Rule 8. Over control. 14 consecutive points alternating up and down. This way the control chart can be used to control the process in a close manner. It helps to control the process on the basis of data. Every engineer in manufacturing should master this process.